Yeah, Dana, good morning. Uh, my question for you is really with um, these last three games coming down the stretch being against really tough opponents. And I know against South Florida, you guys were able to play it a lot more uh, young guys than you usually, usually would. Um, really, what kind of opportunity you think do you think this can be for those young guys playing against high-quality opponents and what you can see, what kind of experience it can, this can get them? Well, we're going to just play. We're going to play who's available. I don't I don't know how many young guys you're referring to. We've played, we played more guys in that game than we have. I don't know if that's going <clears> to <throat> be important or not. It depends on – 15 or so of the guys that have played this year that weren't able to play in that game, how many of those guys we got back. I'd rather play guys that have been in the program for three and four years. So it's a, it's a daily conversation. And, you know, we had a couple of guys back last night that, that didn't play. Uh, hopefully that trend continues and we get to play the people that are here on scholarship that have played for years. So that, that, that's what we're going to need to have happen in order to play good teams, which, you know, SMUs are a really good team, have been for a couple of years, and <clears throat> we've played good teams this year as well. Um, so not really looking past anything other than SMU right now. Uh, not worried about the other ones. The only ones that counts is SMU this week. All right, next question goes to Mark Berman, Fox 26. Mark. Dana, uh, what stands out to you about when you look at SMU on tape on both sides of the ball? Uh, they've uh, they uh, they play hard during every game. Uh, they've played a lot of ball. They've played nine games. Um, you know, they've remained relatively healthy too. I know people make a big deal about you know Roberson, uh, who is one of the top receivers in the country, was was out after a couple of games. Unfortunate, you know. Obviously, have a history with him. Recruited him at West Virginia. Turned into a great player. It's unfortunate that he got hurt now for the season, and you know another receiver got knocked out. Out of who I don't know if five is going to play or not. None of my business. But uh, other than that, they've remained relatively healthy. I mean, if you look at their defense, it's been pretty much the same guys, um, you know, each and every week. And then you know, from an offensive perspective, you know, they've they've. Uh, you know, other couple of guys on offense, they've 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 uh, remained relatively healthy. I, you got it, it starts with their quarterback on offense, obviously. Michelle it seems like he's been around here forever. I've had to coach against him for I think four years now. Uh, you know, so know a good bit about him. But they got they got you know their back is really good, uh, Bentley. Um, you know, and they they lose receivers and they just plug other ones in there and they play pretty good. So. Um, you know, it's going to be a challenge for us defensively. They can make they can make plays, and it all starts with their quarterback. Dana, can you give us an update on how Marquez is doing? Ah, day to day. All right. Next question goes to uh, Joseph Duarte. Go ahead, JD. Hey, good morning, Dana. I, I was curious on uh, Marcus Jones. You know, he was a guy that you know even before he stepped on the field last year, you you were uh, pretty pretty high on just. Him as a, a return guy, what what makes him stand out from possibly others? And just curious, is there a backstory on how you guys were able to 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 land a guy like him in terms of you know, connections or anything? Uh, yeah, Alabama connections with uh, Zach Etheridge, um, you know, and you know, I, I I put you on high alert that Marcus was pretty special. Uh, he's one of those guys last year that I was got tired of saying we got guys that are in the program that are going to make a difference at some point, just be patient. I, you know, and, you know, uh, those guys who coached against them at Arkansas State too, Joe and Brian coached against them at, when they're at Arkansas State and Marcus was at Troy, I think he returned a couple for a touchdown against them or whatever. So we knew he had the capabilities of being able to do it. Um, you know, it, it gets it's getting better. He hadn't been out there on the field for a while. You know, it looked pretty good early, but you know, we he, he made a couple of, of mistakes because I think he was probably trying so hard because he hadn't been out there in a while. But what he did last week is the best I've ever seen. I mean, just the way he can field it clean, the way he can set things up, uh, the quickness with which he makes people miss, and how he sets up blocks. And then there's the 
confidence level of the other 10 people know that he's really good and it's only a matter of time. And so the other 10 are starting to set blocks up and play with a little better effort and finish things off the right way without, without getting flagged because that, that's a pretty chaotic play. And there's usually a lot of penalties on that. Um, so it was fun to watch last week. Um, I, I think we're going to get to a point where people will start spraying the ball everywhere. <clears throat> so we'll have a plan for that as well. We've got questions for Coach. We'll raise your right hand. J.D., back to you. Also another guy, uh, Dana, the Christian Trahan, uh, you know, people look at that position and, and you know, at least here, at least, about what, what their role is. But, I mean, he's a guy that you put him in and he pretty much does anything you ask. Is there, you know, anyone you have had in the previous stops that he compares to or, or just how special he is, the ability to go out there and, and do so many different things for you? Christian's coming into his own. Hardworking, tough, uh, smart. Man, he's fun to coach just because whatever we ask him to do, he can do. He's very versatile at that tight end role. Um, I'm having some fun with him right now. Uh, he's watched a lot of the guy that I had at West Virginia my last three years, Wesco. Uh, Wesco actually texted me uh, Friday night and told me to quit, quit messing around and get 85 the ball. Uh, Christian has watched a lot of him his last couple of years at West Virginia, which uh, Wesco got to a point where he was about 270 and could just really thump people, which is why he got drafted and he's played every game for the Jets since. Uh, Christian can do that. He didn't have the mass, uh, which is why he's such a good receiver. You know, he's, he's pretty light on his feet. Uh, finally got smart and isolated him a couple of times and threw him a fade in the back of the end zone, which was a phenomenal catch. Uh, but he's just versatile and can do about anything. And the more he grows into his body, the more he's going to be able to thump people. I, he can hold his own right now, regardless if he's in the backfield or if he's an attached tight end. Uh, but then he's got, you know, he's just so daggum smart that I can move him around and do a whole bunch of different things for him. So, it's fun right now. It's going to continue to get better. We're going to continue to use them as much as we can without wearing them out. Uh, and he's just going to keep getting better and better. All right. Uh, next question goes to Rob Sellers, 247 Sports. Rob? Thanks, Tom. Coach, uh, you talked a little bit post game about James Fulbright and his, you know, kind of being like a, a team favorite or whatever. Can you give a little backstory on what it is that makes him? I know he's a walk-on. You guys may have even offered like a preferred walk-on situation. But when you guys got him out of Waco, he was very productive in high school. What makes him popular on the team? Uh, just his work ethic. <clears throat> he's the first one in the building. He's the last one to leave. Uh, he lives in the weight room. Um, you know, he was a big power lifter out of high school. He doesn't really need to live in the weight room because he's done it his whole life. Uh, it just never says anything and just works his tail off and is overachieving in everything that he does. Uh, I played college ball with his dad. Um, so I've known about James for quite a while. And, you know, when I got the job here, you know, his, his dad called and I said, I'd, I'd love for him to be on the team. So we got him down here on the team and, you know, he's not very big. You know, he's not very tall. I shouldn't say he's not big. He is big. He's thick. He's, 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 he's thick now. I mean, he's strong. He's one of the strongest kids that we have on the team. Uh, but just the overachieving aspect of his work ethic, uh, the team loves him. So, you know, just through playing scout team, everybody's like, man, he, he's, so, he's so good on scout team. Try to play him. And we <clears throat> started using him on special teams a little bit, and he's making plays. And every time we hand it to him, he falls forward for about 10 yards. So. Um, you know, it's just one, it's one of those feel-good stories because the team likes him so much and respects his worth ethic and is, is honestly the hardest working kid on the team. So was happy to see him, you know, make a play that, that you know, affected the game and, you know, and, and, and the team. Never seen anything like it, you know, on the sidelines, the, the amount of excitement that was there for him and in the locker room as well. All right, swinging the background to Mark Berman. Go ahead, Mark. Dana, what is that like having the son of a guy you played with playing for you? 
Man, man, it feels old. <laughs> I mean, I got I got my own kid on the team, and I ignore him. So uh, when uh, you know when when one of my buddy's kids is out there making plays, I mean, it's it's pretty cool. It's probably one of those things where we look back on after it's all said and done, and say, man, that's pretty cool. I mean, it, it, I'm I'm happy for all my guys when they make plays and 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 have fun. And that was a game that we kind of needed because we just needed to be able to have a little bit of fun with it. And, <clears throat> obviously did that it should get us some confidence to be able to have a little bit more fun here this Saturday. Does your son ignore you back? Yes. Speaking of quarterbacks, how, what have you thought about the growth of Clayton back there? <clears throat> had, his, had his best game, I think. Uh, yeah, our, our past game, in the, in the running game, we had his best game. He's never had 100 yards. Uh, I, I looked at it. I had at one time in 16, my quarterback went for about 150. Uh, is against Kansas. Uh, but, you know, 120 on 10 carries with the 12-yard average is pretty spectacular. So uh, him in the running game was was outstanding. And we schemed some things up and looked really good. He was very patient. Uh, his, his position where he needed to be was really good. His decision-making was really good. Uh, his patience running and protecting himself was really good as well. Uh, pass game was just okay. Uh, but I think that has a little bit more to do with – I mean, three starting receivers were out. It, 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 that just that hurts everything. When three starting receivers are out, uh, the timing it, it is 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 something that's concerning. So we need to get some of those guys back, improve the timing. Um, we had too many drops. I think we had six drops in the game. That's not on Clayton, um, and just missing guys. So the focal point was the run game, which we needed to get that going. Uh, between Mulba and Chandler and Keelan, I thought they ran hard. Um, need to get the passing game going. I think Clayton's uh, ready to take that next step, but he needs guys to throw to, too. How much does that help you when other teams like SMU, they're watching Clayton running, and they're trying to game plan for all that. How much does that help you uh, going forward in terms of, of what they're thinking and trying to defend against you? you got, it, it's going to change things. You can't just – play man coverage and ignore the quarterback. I mean, he, he's proven to where he can get out on you. So whether it's whether it's scheme in the running game or whether it's man coverage and lanes in the pass game, you, you got you to keep your eye on them. And that's going to open things up in the passing game, and that's going to open up things in the running game. All right, next question goes to uh, Andy Yanez from Daily Cougar. Andy? Yeah, Dana, you just kind of touched on it right now, but um, a couple of weeks ago you said that these uh, games are going to be a good opportunity for Bryson Smith to kind of step up and, and show you guys what he's about. What have you seen from him the past two games and really just describe what, um, his performance the past two games? Getting better. You know, he, he made a pretty awesome play there, the, the third play of the game and got in the end zone. I've seen him do that in practice. I just need to keep seeing him do that in the game. Uh, he's a guy that we need to keep – Focusing on and keep repping, <clears throat> and he, he's a guy that's proven to be in the right spot at the right time, and we need to keep get, uh, focusing on trying to get him the ball. He, his completion percentage is, is really high for his career as well. Uh, that throw back to Tune was was on point. Uh, not surprising. I've seen him do it uh, a lot. So we can do a trick or two with him. We can toss him the ball, you know, in the backfield on some fly sweeps, which will open some things up. You know, based on doing that with him is why Keith Corbin scored a touchdown on on a on a wheel route. So uh, he's got a role. Uh, it's going to keep getting bigger uh, as long as he keeps focusing on working hard throughout the course of the week, which he's been great uh, with. And we need to keep focusing on trying to get him the ball. Got time for two more. We'll uh, go to JD and then back to Randy McAvoy. Joseph, Dan, I'm hoping I don't forget a position group, uh, but. Specifically, the last few weeks, running back, linebackers, and, and receivers, you've really had to uh, to go deep into the uh, the roster to, to fill some spots. As, as I, know, I know that's 2020 and, and no excuses, but how challenging is that? And does, does it look any better this week uh, at, at those three positions? That's day-to-day. -day. Uh, I know you want me to give you better answers than that, but uh, it's day-to-day. -day. Mulva can sit at, you know, Mulva continues to struggle with his with his with his lower body. 
um, trying, feel, I feel terrible for him. I mean, he's trying. He went out there and he wanted to have him get game. I was going to get him the ball as much as he can handle. Uh, I was happy that Chandler Smith came in and gave us a smart. Uh, that's the best I've seen him play. Happy with Keelan Walker's progressive uh, uh, nature, which he's attacking every week. I uh, hope to get Kyle Porter back this week, who's a team captain. It means a lot to us. So yeah, that's nothing new to me at the running back spot. I mean, those guys, you need five, and you're going to you're gonna churn through them. That's the most demanding position physically that exists. Uh, never dealt with this at receiver. Uh, you know, it's I – mean, we were down to – gosh, I mean, we were down to three uh, – when I – three, we were down to – well, for the four positions, we were down to four scholarship players, um, you know, and so we were we were playing with with uh, you know some guys that Dylan Robinson got a snap or two, you know, Segovia got a snap or two, but you know we need to get some of those guys back. I've never dealt with that. You can't you can't be good in the passing game by putting people out there that our quarterbacks never thrown to. Um, you know, and then linebacker just took that hit. Uh, you know, Grant's holding it together. Uh, Manny Nunnery went in there and played his tail off. That was good to see. Uh, you know, hopefully get a couple of guys back and, and just got to deal with it. You know, whether you, whether you put new guys in there or having guys change positions or whatever. You know, we moved Deontay down uh, to an outside linebacker spot. He helped out. He played good, uh, you know, because Giovanni was out. So it is what it is, man. It's going to be it's going to be interesting to see who I have for practice tomorrow morning. All right, uh, last one is Randy McAvoy, KPRC. Go ahead, Randy. Hey, Dana, follow up if you don't mind on on the tune you just were talking about him. Uh, everybody sees him on game day. Can you just just describe what he's like as a as a practice player and in the film room? A lot of these guys love to to, to spend time and just live in that film room. What what how what's his approach like? You know, away from game day. Uh, yeah, he's uh, he's he's pretty tuned in. Uh, you know, it, it, you know, I, I, he's got kind of a coach's kid mentality. He's always there. Uh, him and him and, and Logan are always up here. I mean, they're in the offices nonstop. They're watching video. They got a room downstairs that they spend a lot of time in. Um, you know, just just he's here to play football. I mean, he's just a motivated, smart guy that understands a lot, is gaining confidence, and just now starting to come into his own. Um, very motivated, very confident. Uh, he's a he's a joy to coach. He does not get rattled. I can lose my mind at times, and it doesn't bother him. He's even keel, good or bad. He's kind of the same. You know, that's a that's maybe the best quality you can have as a quarterback. So, you know, excited about where he's at with his progress, and just needs to keep coming along. Uh, can't afford to have a bad game. You know, at that spot, you have a bad game, we lose, and. You know, he's, he's coming into his own door. He understands that. I have one other question, if I have time real quick. Uh, there's been another postponement today. I think the A&M Ole Miss game was postponed already. How concerned are you just in general now, with, especially the last couple of weeks, so many games, you know, have been affected specifically the last two weeks? And I know you're just worried about your program, but what, what are you seeing right now that may concern you with the big picture rest of the season? A lot. It, ours was close last week. Uh, ours was close. I mean, South Florida was one or two away from being canceled. We were one or two away. We just talked about those those three rooms we have. I mean, if you get – it doesn't matter if it's injuries or COVID or whatever it is, when you combine them, it's the same thing. They're either available or they're not. I mean, I'm not going to put – I'm not going to put two running backs at linebacker and go try to beat a really good football team. That's just not fair, which is why – Two weeks ago, 10 games got canceled. Last week, 15 games got canceled. Uh, this week, there's going to be – it wouldn't surprise me if it's double digits again. I uh, told our team, we're fortunate, and we keep doing the right things, and we're doing things right to the point to where we get a place. So don't take that lightly and take advantage of that and continue to do things right. This thing's going to be over pretty quick. It's going to be over in the next couple, you know, three, four, five weeks. So just keep doing things right. Stay in your bubble and be fortunate that we get a play. And hopefully this Saturday we get a play. You know, that's pretty much the bottom line. 